Hi there, I'm Jonathan and welcome to my channel, Jonathan's Diamond Painting and Stuff. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're coming back to me, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you here today. So today I'm going to do a whip and chat. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with me personally and everything, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to update you guys on what's going on with me at the moment. Uh, for those of you who don't know, or WIP stands for Work in Progress, which is my magical potions, which I will show you in a second. Um, it's just where we work and whatever we're working on, and and then I just talk to you um, for about an hour, you know, about what's going on in my life. Okay. Um, if you're new to this channel, um, I'm Jonathan. I've been doing this since last August. I suffered very, very, very bad uh, mental health issues um, for me. I was, I, um, I was depressed. I was um, almost burnt out at work, and I just needed to take time out. And I didn't go back to my job uh, for six months. So, <laughs> so yeah, so a lot to unpack there, but. Yeah, but I'm doing really, really well, but I'll talk about that as I go. Okay, so, um, before I start, I just realised I've got a bit of my light board showing, so I'm just going to try and cover that up, just so that it doesn't distract you. Cardboard templates I've got on the go, let's just... Okay, that's fine. There we go. I always like it when I get a bit further down the painting. <laughs> and this stuff like this isn't as much of an issue. Okay, so um, I am doing a a diamond painting event for um, the Dak Fans UK Facebook group. That is um, Diamond Art Club, um, and um, that the group is run by the lovely Jan. Um, and um, we did one last year for Famalo hashtag Famalon UK. Um, you can see my, I have a playlist of that. I'll try and remember to put it in the corner of the screen. I always, was it there? Sorry. Um, but I, I sometimes remember, sometimes I forget. So do forgive me if I forget um, when I'm editing this, I'll try to remember. Um, I do get a bit ditzy with my brain and everything. Um, so yeah, I, um, I, um, I'm doing this event, so it was meant to be a spring theme painting. I think it's turned to an or a free for all because um, some people just didn't have a spring theme painting in the da the Diamond Art Club spring um, or Easter theme. Um, but I mean, I did early on. I managed to persuade Jan to, to let me use magical potions, which is the one I'm working on now, uh, because it had some bits of grass in and some butterflies, as Jan <laughs> happily told me. So don't forget the butterflies, Jonathan. So. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, but this is um, a beautiful, beautiful piece. I'll just put a picture in now. Um, it is, um, it's got, I think, um, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve potions, I think, of all different themes. And I thought it really fit my a video games theme, you know, with the potions and everything, role-playing games and that sort of thing. And so I thought it would really fit really well in my games room next door. So, yeah, so I'm really... Um, looking forward to get uh, to working on this well i'm already working on it it's been amazing so far i've done one of the um potions and i will just um bring the overhead camera in now okay so let me just move my tremor over so you can see and Excuse one second while I just get the um, the camera in. And just zoom in a little more. And there you go. Just so you can see. It's so hard not to get glare actually. I was just going to get a bit better lighting in here. So it's just super sparkly. Um, and I love it. I don't know what potion this is. It's kind of in a watery cavern, but I know the water potion or the breathe underwater potion is the final one, I think. There's pictures of mermaids and that one, I think. But I just love the little the detail. Um, but yeah. 
there you go you can just see it and you see this is you can see all the colors of the cavern and the potion in the foreground and some craggy rocks there and maybe a pillar there i just love this didn't enjoy the brickwork as much i find i don't know i find just dark colors not as interesting as light colors i guess you know and these bricks are quite a subtle effect, so it's not wasn't as interesting as some of the other brickwork, like where you do really bold outlines. I mean, there are a few dark outlines, but not many. So yeah, I, but I do love the use of very dust and ABs. So there's some white ABs here in this section here. I guess is that I don't know if that's frothing over or something. The, the bottle, um, and then you've got some lovely highlighting of the edge of the archway the edge of the window sorry that you're looking into and some yellow fairy dust and some golden abs so yeah i was I'm amazed at that and i've just literally gone over to the next section because i'm doing these a bit unusual for me i usually go all the way across all the way across all the way across but i thought i really want to do each potion individually uh, because they're each a mini painting in their own right and i just didn't think it would be quite as interesting to do going across because each of these have a different theme so I'll get my head into the theme of the next one and so on so I carry it so I did all of this one up to just half a half of the uh, brickwork between rows and I've just gone across and I've just yes last night I did all the I did all the boring um, brickwork because I thought I wanted to work on something a bit more interesting when um, uh, when I'm um, talking to you guys, you know. Um, yeah, so anyway, so this is the look potion, I believe. And just one second, I'm just going to reposition the camera. And I thought I'll do both cameras because now I've got it set up with my... Uh, my good camera above which gives the best detail I'll just keep this camera in the corner just so you get both views the best of both worlds it's a bit of a severe angle but I just thought it was interesting so <laughs> uh, so yeah so let's see I've not got very much of the square left here for this square but I will continue continuing this now I was trying to design something um, because you know, I like to try all the I, I like to try all the new things and give my opinion on them rather than relying on others. Uh, I want to try things myself, and so this canvas is a brand. It's a very very new canvas from Di Diamond Dark Club, and it includes their patented, patent pending or patented um, perforated uh, film. Um, so, unlike the old film, I think this can these these can be reused, and you can. Uh, once you've pe peeled them off and you can put them back either way um, But the big thing about this is they're perforated at um, I think is it something like 10 by oh, Is it 10 by 11? Oh, I can't remember but um, it's um It just um, it's ju they're just um, a certain size and you can just peel each perforation off and you've got a little square to work on um, so it just um people that like just peeling the film back with the cover minders and everything this might be for you working on it i'm not 100 percent sure yet as some those of you know me uh will know i prefer sorry i just left a magnet in there i prefer working with release papers and i usually release paper the whole paint <laughs> even though they're like peak curling between rows and everything it's just the way i like to work um but I thought I want to try these. I want to like you know um, give them a good good chance. So I decided when I started this painting, I'm going to work with the perforations if I can. So the first thing that I noticed majorly working with these perforations is that you can't tell where the edges are when because it's all clear, you know. So it's really really difficult to tell where the edges are. So if you like me, want to do a square at a time, not just do loads in a chaotic way um, then you ne you'll need to mark them somehow um, with a piece of release paper now 
I thought, oh yes, I'm going to design something. I'm going to design a little window or something with some, and I bought some material. I bought some faux leather um, to go in my cry cut. So I thought, well, cry cut can cut this. I mean, this is a very simple shape. Uh, so um, let me just um, zoom you out a little bit. There we go, and so you see here, this is like, I cut this L shape in like so, so that can kind of go at the bottom of the square and on, on one side of the square, so you can outline either one side of the square or the other uh, nice and quickly, you know, and I just thought that might be helpful for me. Um, unfortunately, it's... Um, my plan didn't work because I, I I cut some magnetic material, magnetic sheeting, and I was kind of hoping that it would all stay in place uh, if I put a magnet underneath. But unfortunately, these magnets, this or the the sheeting, it just it will hold, but it just isn't strong enough, you know, to hold it in place properly. So I'm gonna have to. Either use it without, and I might just just put some stiff card on this. Um, we might um, sew a little design on it because it's very thin faux leather um, with a sewing machine to make it a bit more decorative. Uh, maybe put our our lo our uh, logo or initials or whatever. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, um, so just yeah, just let me know what you think of that idea. But it's just um, really it's just a quick way just to make sure I know where I am. You know, I know where the end of the square is because it is so hard. But yeah, so <laughs> anyway, right, I am just going to put my tram at. Now, if you don't know what a tram at is, th this is what I call a drill tray mat. It's my own invention. Um, it is basically a lovely fabric mat um, yes. uh, that... Um, that I, I that I sell in various different designs. Do check out my eBay shop that I'll put a link up now and a link in the details below. Um it's um um yeah it's um the company that I've well company venture that I've started with my bestie Sarah um JNS makes stuff and um yeah so um it's just really really um different designs and the idea came along on because I wanted to be able to put something on my canvas without um without marking my 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 finished drills okay and I hated this the, the sticky silicone sheets I always pulled drills off and got sticky residue on them I did, really didn't like them so this um I just love these they're so nice um soft and yeah and everyone that's got one can't believe how um how they can't live without them now <laughs> you know so yeah working with add more zest trays and bijou bliss trays um so um yeah the the add more zest are pretty good for like just quickly doing a, uh, some drills that aren't that you don't have that many drills um and um bijou bliss are really good um, for mul the multi-placing and everything and they've got the lovely magnet lid and magnetic um, stopper so you can easily get drills in and out but I'll show you them in use during this session wouldn't be without my cup of tea and my cake at this time of the day so I've got Caribbean dream tea which is like kind of a chocolate and coconut sort of tea um, from Golden Monkey Company in the UK absolutely love them I'll try and link them below and I've made a homemade banana bread from the B-Row book um, B-Row was a is a very very old brand of um, flour and things and they did their own baking books to to um promote their promote their products back in the day they may started like in the don't know how long ago it has but when but we had coal ovens <laughs> when like one of the first books uh, came out so <laughs> yeah old but anyway so yeah i'm sorry i'm rambling so i'm just going to get started now it's just i've not done a whipping chat for a little while i think because i've been doing a few lives recently so yeah this is a, a new experience again for me so i'm just going to turn the light board on Okay, and right, we have got, and because I'm so close into this square, I'm just going to peel this back. And I'm just going to peel the perforation back. 
So, sorry, I was going on about the perforation, wasn't it? Another thing that I noticed is that... Is that the perforate... It doesn't always perforate cleanly, and sometimes it leaves little notches behind. And that can be annoying, because you can't see them. So that is actually um, been pretty good. It, you can see that, yeah. So that's um, come off quite cleanly. Yeah. And I could use that like a release paper if I wanted a clear release paper. But yeah, but sometimes you just get little notches and then it you can't understand why you can't place a um, a drill. Um, and it's because um, it's just because the um, the notches aren't um, uh, there's a little notch um, that it's um, that hasn't um, been put, been torn off. Okay, sorry, I'm just moving my light board a little bit so that I can um oh, just a second. There we go. Okay, and so I can see this, the edge, so I'm just lining up my guide. Because I think it's about here. Yeah, there we go. So I just got a rough guide for the area I'm working in. I'm probably going to cover some of this with a, another release, a, a spare release paper, just so that I'm not going to be sticking it to myself. And let's get started. So I'm just going to do some of these squares now. Okay, so I'm trying to decide where to begin. Because there is a few bits going on. So. The most major thing that's happened in my personal life is that I have started this venture with Sarah and it has had ups and downs uh, with stresses and everything but I, I guess the most major thing which I will talk about now because it has affected me negatively um, is the whole Etsy debacle. <laughs> so. So me and Sarah, we started off the um, the business or the venture, and um, we were pl I, we got the Etsy store and everything. We were planning to open it, and um, yeah. And I was so originally I wanted to open our store, um, and stupidly I started to like look for names. I was logged in as my on my personal Etsy account and and I accidentally picked the name under that account and I did not realise that once you've picked a name and gone to the next stage you can't you can't ever give that name up. Or at least I don't know. I don't know if I figured out a way because what I wanted was I wanted to um transfer that name into another email um, which was just uh, which was uh, th just the business so I could keep them nice and separate so my personal and my business things could be the sa could be the same um, easy right yeah but um, but anyway so I I'd started to open another account and then I just didn't realize that you couldn't transfer that over and then they um, and so anyway I I think I, I think I picked just a stock name like I think it was Jonathan twenty twenty four or something like that as um, my new store name just to get to the next stage or s something I can't really remember it's all been a blur but when I figured out I couldn't get the new name over um, I decided to um, I do it on my personal account anyway. And so I started set, setting up the shop and everything. And what I hadn't realised was I was setting up the other shop, the uh, Jonathan 2024. And um, and that wasn't the one I wanted. That wasn't our business name at all. So, you know, I was... Um, um, yeah, so I'd opened the wrong shop, basically. So quickly, as soon as I realised, I, clo I paid... I, I paid up... Because I paid to open the shop, it was very annoying, but there was no way Etsy make it really difficult to contact anyone about anything. It's really hard, and so I um, and so I wasn't able to um, do anything about the fact that I just paid like about thirteen pounds for this um, store that I'm not going to be able to use. Um, 
So I um So anyway, I closed that shop. Well, I paid up the shop and I closed it. And um and then I opened the shop under my personal account like um you know with the name I wanted to JNS make stuff. And I set about, you know, putting all the shop about information in, the uh, details and everything. And um, I did, I even put all the policies in, which I know not everyone does, you know, but I felt it was important. I wanted to, you know, be as thorough as I could. And so I even looked at, I looked at documentation. I made sure that I was, you know, legally, you know, protecting myself and giving the right guidelines and everything so I did everything then I started doing the listings but I kept them all like I think I put my shop on holiday mode or something or I just kept the listings hidden you know so I didn't have any issues there and then um what was I gonna say and then I decided to um sorry and then I just uh, I just like left it and then I got Sarah to log in which I've been told is allowed you know because Etsy when uh, say themselves you know that you can share your login details with somebody else so I um, so I shared it with Sarah and then she logged on checked everything was all kosher and okay and and then um, yeah it was and then so come four o'clock just before four o'clock on launch day everything went crazy I um actually let me zoom you in a little bit a bit more interesting view yeah so um I um on launch day just before my shop got suspended no explanation oh yeah you'll be sent an email I wasn't sent an email um I, I peeled it straight away and yeah it just um, um, I get a nasty well not a nasty email but just a very very quick email back saying that we've reviewed it thoroughly and we um, it's this 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 should the decision holds you know and yeah but no, with no explanation to what I've actually done wrong so anyway I um very very upset it was a devastating thing to happen on launch day we had to delay launch by day and then i've opened an ebay store now um and funnily enough they've not been horrible to me at all you know so and but then to make matters worse i hadn't realized that when they suspended my shop they'd also suspended my, not only suspended my shop but they've spent suspended my ability to to pay for stuff to shop on let's say so I hadn't actually realised that, and I needed to buy something with the company that I, for, for something I'm planning for the business. And when I came to want to pay for it, it said, oh, suspended, and so I couldn't buy it. So Sarah said to me, oh, I'll buy it under mine. So we did. I gave her my, maybe stupidly, because we, we just used it, did it, was going to do it on my card, because it's, you know, me paying for it. And then... Sarah put did one transaction because we were doing them in two separate transactions and first one went through but then when she went to do the second one she was suspended so I've honestly no idea what's going on um, whether my address has some black mark on it I've no idea right now I don't feel like ever dealing with Etsy again but oh, that's just my emotion speaking at the moment if they come back to me with a rational explanation for what's happened, then yeah, I'm, I may, ch I will of course change my mind because I'd rather be on it than not. But it's just the way I've been treated is just being awful, you know. And I know I'm not alone. Those people get suspended all the time, but just this big brother bureaucratic, no explanation. I mean, oh, it'd be so easy just to, you know, explain what what's going on so yeah it's just very disappointing what's happened I guess um, but yeah and, it, and that was last night <laughs> all that happened you know with um, Sarah getting suspended as well and it's just 
and I've got people offering me, you know, oh yeah, we'll sell your stuff for you, you know, and everything and promote your business and things, but people shouldn't have to do that, you know. I've, I'm innocent, you know, and I just almost feel like I'm in jail in a way, you know, because, um, but anyway, it's just not a nice situation to be in. So. <laughs> So anyway, but yeah, that is my Etsy debacle. So at the moment, I'm staying on eBay. I'd rather be on a platform like Etsy, which has other creative things on it, because I will get like some natural gravita gravity towards my items, you know, just by being on the platform. But it may never happen. You know, my husband wants me to like just stop using them altogether get a charge back for you know for my um item for the for the because i've paid like for a, a store which i can't use you know so i don't know though but anyway so at the moment all the um sales that i've um i've made are all from my own personal promotion and i have you know taken a significant you know amount for a small startup you know in the first few weeks you know so i guess i'm proud of the fact that i was able to market it you know and everything you know i've done a couple of um, promotional events you know i've um we did an easter giveaway me and sarah where i made some tram mats um that's these drill tray mats and an easter theme and sarah did some matching pencil cases and that was on our own facebook page um which is at the beginning and end, and I'll I'll link it in the details below. Um, yeah, um, and that was exciting. And then we did an event for the hashtag Spring Along a Farm, uh, which um, is the event I'm just been talking about before. Um, and so we get we did a couple of tram mats um, and which is an exclusive spring theme and a couple of um, a pencil cases to go with them again in the same sort of theme as the um, as the tra as well same fabric as the tram mat so yeah so we um, we were really um, excited about that but um, you know and thank uh, I'm very I'm very happy that our our orders went out um well sorry our prizes for the spring along a farm went out today and thought we were going to do it a little bit earlier this week but sarah had another turn with her health um sarah has um undifferentiated disconnected no undifferentiated connected tissue disease um and um which is an umbrella of lots of different conditions um that she has including lupus, arthritis, um, all sorts of things. Um, but, um, yeah, so she wasn't well enough to finish the pencil, ca the pencil case that was left um, with our, our, our time scale. So she just um, did it a little bit later, you know, and um, so we got them out yesterday. So I'm very pleased about that. Um, looking forward to hearing what the prize winners think of it. I'm just so, so loving people, you know, seeing people's reactions to our products, you know, it's just amazing. I just love, I just love people bringing happiness to people. And then when people are so thankful for the prizes or even when they buy a product and they love it, you know, that just makes me feel warm inside, <laughs> you know, that I've made a difference to people's lives, you know, so yeah. Uh, I do love that aspect of it and that, to be honest that's what I do it for the most and I don't know if it'll ever be a viable business venture because it's just um, me playing around with doing beautiful designs with fabric and then as soon as I as soon as I make sales that just goes back all, all back into it again you know so yeah oh there's always one isn't there always like have one left when you catch it there's, se <laughs> there's several on this bit
There we go. Okay. Where was I? Yes, yeah, whenever I set up, all the sales will just go straight back into the business. So it's um, at the moment, you know, we're in that stage. But maybe one day, you know, we'll be making a little bit just so. But it's all pocket money and hobby money and stuff, you know. But I do try and to put the profits back into, you know, buying more fabric, you know, just to expand our range. Because uh, at this stage, really, we're just at that very early stage, you know. Um, where we, we're not making lots and lots and lots of sales, we're making a few, you know, but obviously it will hopefully improve over time with the more designs we have. So I think it's important to just try and keep um, my creative things coming, you know, um, at this time. Sorry, just got one or two bad drills. Actually, talking about this kit, um, drill quality has been amazing. I've not, I think there was only one colour which was really, really bad. Um, I was going to ask my friends actually if I had any of this colour. It's number 3045, and it's kind of a, like a, a brownie sort of colour. Um, it, it's been absolutely diabolical. But after, after we did all those, um, prize contests and everything um, which went really well um, um, I just I guess I just got a little bit burnt out not majorly but I just felt that I'd done a bit much in a short space of time um, not really had any time to myself you know to do my mindful things that I like doing you know all the diamond painting and things and yeah I just felt that I need to be careful and I was due to go to my sister's this weekend on going Saturday morning coming back Monday morning and I realized that I was wasn't dreading it but I was not looking forward to spending that length of time away from home even though it's only a couple of days I just thought I'm gonna miss my diamond painting for my daily chill I'm just gonna go out my routine I'm not gonna get the things at home done that I want to get done and so I just wasn't happy and so actually a big step for me this was I just I, I, I basically messaged my sister and just said is it all right if I come on Sunday instead and just stay for one day and go back Monday morning and um and she was brilliant my sister absolutely lovely I mean she's suffered from anxiety as well and I couldn't I can't really put my finger on it completely, you know, why it's like that, but it just reminded me really, I've got to be careful and uh, I'm not through this yet, I'm not through this um, part, um, this um, difficulty with my mental health, you know, and weirdly, work is really, really good you know and I'm actually enjoying work I'm looking forward to going to work you know it's just my routine and when anything goes out of my routine you know if I can't diamond paint every day I'm struggling you know to cope um you know so I really love this mindful time um that um that I get when I come home from work, you know, each day, or when I'm on my days off, even, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> Just, um, oh, yeah, I've just been struggling a bit recently, you know, so, yeah, but, you know, I'll be okay, I'm sure. Talking about work, you know, I've, um, like I said, I've been really enjoying it. Um, I talk to my patients, you know, and I don't hide where I've been for the last six months, you know, so I, I'm quite open with them about what's happened to me, you know, and where I've been and everything, and pretty much all of them are really receptive, really understanding you know for you know what I've been through and I mean some and some a lot of patients you know going through similar things you know even elderly people you know get 
depression, you know, and I suffer a lot of them that can be living on their own, quite lonely, which isn't me because I have I'm so lucky to have my husband. Um but yeah, they're really sympathetic, you know, and good people to talk to about it, you know. I uh, just saw a lady today that I hadn't seen probably for over a year and I was t telling her about it, you know, and you know, she was absolutely thrilled that I was back and really enjoyed my, me during the visit, you know, so it's it just make me feel warm inside when I guess I do have this natural need to feel wanted, to feel like I'm making a difference to people that I, I need that reassurance from people that I'm doing the right thing because I have so little confidence in myself that you know I you know that I you know I need that from people and it's crap that I need that but that's the reality of who I am you know and maybe one day it'll be better probably not i'm 40 now and i'm still feeling like this i've been like this all my adult life you know um yeah but just um it's part of it is probably the neurodivergent spe things i'm on the spectrum for i could possibly have aut autism i don't really know yet until i've been assessed i'm almost certain i've got adhd and i am waiting for assessment for that um it's just real, real, um, really difficult. Um, and I know I'm not alone, there are a lot of people like me, you know, so all I'll say is, you know, if you think you're working with someone that's um, similar to the things I'm saying, you know, maybe they get overwhelmed, conversations, sometimes they may phase out, you know, like when you're talking to them and they're just like, their eyes go elsewhere or you looks like they're not concentrating properly don't reprimand them don't say were well, you listening to me you know because that person could just be struggling you know to stay focused all the time you know and it it's not that what you're saying is it is boring to them you know it's just a real struggle surviving in this world you know when you're a neurodivergent so yeah just try to you know understand you know that even if you um can cope perfectly well in these situations that doesn't mean that everyone can you know so yeah it's um and thankfully um touch wood I've not really had any office-based altercations with anyone for quite some time, you know, because I have had them in the past, you know, when you get, I don't know, just that clashing person, well, not even the clashing personality, it's just that lack of understanding and that awful RSD, that's rejection sensitive dysphoria, where you just get, um, even if it's just a minor knock or someone just saying something um constructive you feel really bad about it you really really don't cope you know with that uh with that uh, ne with that negative response you know even if it's your boss saying oh yeah well, you did it like this this time uh but ne uh, don't worry about it but next time just do it you know just do it like this and everything um but it's no problem and you'll probably go back and think that over and over and over and over. Did you harm the patient? Did you do this? Did you do that? You know, you just go over and over. And I talk to several people usually saying, oh, I did this, you know, at work. And then they all say, oh, you've not really done anything wrong, Jonathan. You know, it's fine. Everyone makes mistakes or this, that and the other. You learned from it, like, like this. And everyone will be saying the same thing to me, saying, oh, yeah, you've not really got anything to worry about. And then I'll feel better. <laughs> but I have to have that kind of that positive from somebody else not me I and like like I said maybe one day but I mean I have confidence about certain things I mean I'm pretty confident about the way I look the way I dress um, how I do my hair I have my face care routine to try and you know stop myself from aging too much I know I look young for my age I try not to be 
you know, egotistical about it. I mean, Sarah will probably say different, but you know, that's Sarah. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, you know, I know I'm incredibly lucky to still look the way I do, and I'm proud of that. You know, I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be like. Um, I'm not going to reject it whenever someone says to me, oh, you look so young for your age, Jonathan, I own it, you know, and, uh, you know, I I think, you know, given that I'm not confident in any other aspect of my life, I think, you know, I'm confident in this, in that one, you know, so, yeah, so, I guess it's just the emotional stuff, but anyway, yeah, I've talked about that, haven't I? Um, recently I took my counselling down, I'm only on it once a month now, um, which is positive, although Sarah thinks given that I had this recent anxiety attack, maybe I shouldn't have reduced it so quickly, although I've been on every other week for quite some time now, for about two or three months I'd say, so I just felt it was time to step it down. Um, you know, so we'll see. I've got a session next week, um, and we'll just see how things go. I've got something really big to look forward to. I'm actually going on a holiday at the end of the month to Disney World in Florida. I absolutely love Disney World, and I just can't wait to go back. It's We've not been since before COVID. We used to go every year or two. Um, and it's my favourite place on earth, and I, I'm really starting to look forward to it. I was worried recently because I wasn't looking forward to it, and I guess that's just because I'm not used to being out of my routine. I am a bit, still a bit apprehensive about everything, in that um, I don't. Um, it's been such a long time since I've been out of my comfort zone, and out of my, and even though I love Disney so much. I I don't um I don't know somehow I, I just don't know what I'll do with myself sometimes. I mean I know I'll be in the parks every day enjoying it, enjoying life, but it's just not it's that you think, oh when you get when you get back you're gonna do some diamond painting, but I won't because I won't have it with me, you know, and it's just like what do I do? <laughs> yeah. I mean sometimes I take I mean, sometimes I take my um, Steam Deck with me, um, which is um, which is like um, a portable games console thing, a bit like the Switch, um, and um, I just um, play play some games, you know, on that, on the flight and everything. But I just, I'm not sure to be honest, because I won't have a huge amount of time to play stuff and everything, you know, just when we're in the room and everything. Um, and sometimes, you know, I get, like, progress on a game while I'm away, but then I don't play it again, you know, once I'm home, you know, so, so it's just, like, got all these games in limbo. Oh, just checking, I've got no more equals signs. Nope. Um, but yeah, so I'm not sure what's, um, gonna happen there. But we are actually taking my mum and dad to Disney with us, so... So my mum and dad have never been to Disney World. Um, they've barely been outside of Europe, to be honest. They went to Canada to see my um, sister's husband's family. Um, but um, apart from that, I don't think they've been been to the States at all really. Um, well, that's not the States, is it? That's Canada. Um, but yeah, so um, really, really looking forward to taking them. They just really felt that they wanted to do these things, you know, before it's too late for them not to do them anymore. And we've been so many times, we know exactly how to do it and everything. So I'm really, really looking forward to sharing it with them. Um, so that will be hopefully exciting. <laughs> You know, my mum's a little bit of a nervous flyer, so hopefully everything will go well, you know, when we're flying over there. And I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys how it went and, you know, what we're going to... Um, any tips, you know, if you want to go over there and everything, I'll, I'll definitely be sharing it all. Um, I'm going to... we're staying in Universal for the first four nights, um, I'm going to do most of the Universal stuff then. 
and then we're staying in Disney the rest of the time so for the remaining 10 nights I think we'll be in Disney I just felt I didn't want to do it the other way around because I thought I'll always be like thinking oh god we've got Universal at the end of a holiday I thought well but I know Disney's the best you know and I prefer Disney you know so and also we'll have 14 day tickets to Universal so we'll be able to stay um, um, over Oh, sorry, what was my brain's going off for what today? Um, so, yeah, we'll have two-week tickets, so we'll be able to go back if we want, you know. I always like driving an American car and American roads because they're so much bigger and safer than our roads, you know. It's just... <laughs> Yeah, and it's so much easier to drive there than it is here, just getting used to which side of the road you're meant to be on, and then making sure that you use your right foot for the brake and your right foot for the accelerator, because the first time I went to America, <laughs> I was like, kangaroo, like, uh, 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 and my husband's like, what are, you, what are you doing, what are you doing, and he's like, oh, wait a second, you're not using your left foot to brake, are you, and I was like, yeah, there's only two pedals, and he was like, no, you don't do that, Jonathan, <laughs> so, yeah, so I had to, um, um, learn, you know, how to drive differently and everything, so, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but once you get, once I get going, it's actually really jo enjoyable driving in America, you know, so, yeah, but, I mean, I'm hoping that Disney is as magical as it was for us, for my mum and dad, because it's, I know a lot of things have changed, a lot of things that used to be included aren't anymore. There's a lot of like the um the um uh the rides and everything, you know, like um the fast pass systems I think have all gone and they've been replaced with like something called Genie, which is like an app sort of thing. I think you can potentially have to spend money to get the better versions of that each day or to spend more money to like pre-book the big popular rides so I have no idea how that will pan out so I'm hoping that doesn't all that stuff doesn't ruin it for us um in the past when we went we ate on the di on the Disney dining plan um which is like where you get points to eat in Disney uh, restaurants but um this time um we couldn't get the dining plan because it it um, was only just being reintroduced, I think, when we booked, or it hadn't been reintroduced yet, so we couldn't, um, uh, we couldn't book it yet. So, and in the old system, you could, you'd have a time of the year where you'd get like a really good deal. It was usually around about this time of year for the following year, and if you booked then, it would, um, you'd often be able to upgrade the dining plan to the next one up. So you could get the standard dining plan and, do, and upgrade to the deluxe, or just get the value dining plan and upgrade to the standard um, for free, you know, so or for not very much, you know. So that was a really good incentive. But obviously, when it was during COVID, the dining plan incentive wasn't there because they didn't need to increase that amount of people in the restaurants um, because there weren't that many people going, you know, so it's only just come back recently, so yeah, so we couldn't do that, you know, but anyway, um, let's do that one, so, oh, there's not very many of them actually, yeah, so looking forward to sharing all of that with you. I am really starting to get in the mood for it though, I try not to get too excited because it gets debilitating, you know, when you like so excited you can't wait to go somewhere but you know but i i am but you know i'm i'm, I'm being sensible i'm growing up i suppose unfortunately <laughs> but yeah so i'm just um trying to think if there's anything else to tell you guys um i am um what's that on there I'm still plodding my way through um, Supernatural, um, you know, with Sam and Dean, um, and I'm on season five now. I was on season eight when I um, stopped watching it, and I'm determined this time 
to try and get to the end. Even though I gave up on, on um, Twin Peaks to watch this, which is a really annoying because I was really into that and I, I hadn't finished it the time before and then I stopped. Oh, it's just my personality type. I do really struggle to follow through with watching things. I need safe shows, you know, and sometimes I start watching something and I just not in the mood for it anymore you know so but yeah I um no doubt I will be back because I enjoy Twin Peaks every time I watch it but um but yeah I got further this time than I ever did before <laughs> but yeah so I'm just um yeah, so I'm watching that. Um, me and Sarah, we started watching Dungeons and Dragons, the movie that came out recently. Um, but um, I think it was, was it? I can't remember what year it came out. But anyway, with Chris Pine um, and a stellar cast, Hugh, uh, Hugh Grant. Um, someone that Sarah found very dishy but I can't remember his name um yeah so quite a few notable actors in it but it was very very good but we we got about an hour left to go um when Sarah had to go home because it was just getting too late we were a bit disorganized with everything as usual so yeah we're looking forward to finishing that but we really 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 enjoyed the bit we watched you know and it was a lot better than the Dungeons and Dragons that I watched a long time ago but that was a bit of a, a b-rated movie I did I did enjoy it because I do like giving things a chance and not being too judgmental about low budget movies and everything but um, but yeah but this one was very good and my um, favorite movie reviewer um, Grace Randolph who has the channel up beyond the trailer um, she really liked it as well, so that's a really, really good sign. <laughs> so, but um, because I do rate her movie reviews really, really highly because she's very open minded compared to a lot of critics. Um, for instance, I mean, I feel that The Guardian um, film or TV re review series reviews. It's just got to the stage now that if they say something bad about a movie, I just feel, well, I'll probably like it because <laughs> they're just so negative about so many things, you know, that I just think there's no need for it, you know, it's con being constructive, but it's just, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so no, no movie review this time because I don't think I've really seen one recently oh i did see scoop on netflix that is a drama a true based on a true story about the prince andrew debacle about the interview that was got for the bbc it stars gillian anderson as um oh, um emily maitlis who is the presenter um, and although, I mean, The Guardian had maybe a tiny point that Gillian Anderson was a bit Thatcher-like, I didn't think she was. I actually believed her performance a lot, but then I don't... I'd never watched Newsnight, really, so I didn't really know Emily Maitlis as much as my husband does. So I wasn't that um, bothered about that. You know, I thought she pulled it off well. But the thing I really liked about it was that... Um, they really focused on on um, unsung heroes, I guess. There was a producer, um, I can't remember her last name, I think she was called Sam, played very, very well by Billy Piper. And a lot of the story was focused on her and about how she'd... Um, the things, the decisions she'd made and the way that she had managed to get... Um, she, so she had had a significant part in um, in obtaining um, the interview for Prince Andrew, you know, and her persuasiveness and her ability, you know, to land that um, that interview, you know. And I just thought it was brilliant that they highlighted that and highlighted it's not just about people like Emily Maitlis that are right at the that you know are the people presenting. 
you know that it, there's there are other people you know you might not know about you know that are busy you know trying to get that and the fact that she um i guess was a female you know in a um often a male dominated atmosphere you know who's successful that was a brilliant you know thing to show so yeah But yeah, so that was my watching <laughs> at the moment, you know, not really anything exciting. Um, I'm just trying to think coming up, what's going to happen. Um, I'll just, I'm going to continue working on Magical Potions until the event is over at least. Then I'll have to decide whether I finish it or whether I um, start with um, Majestic Ship again. Uh, which is on hold at the moment um i'm trying to decide whether to start playing final fantasy 7 rebirth again i'm really really struggling no spoilers please in the comments if you have played it um i just struggle in the battle system and i found i find it quite challenging i'm giving i'm going in and out of different projects quite a lot at the moment i just i haven't really tried that hard you know i've kind of given it a break sort of thing so I will get back to it, and but I have my mind has to be in the right place. So you see, everything is a bit all over the place at the moment. So so it's probably been a bit of a disjointed um, whip and chat, you know. Just um, as far as me and my mental health goes and everything, I'm doing okay. It, I, it's not over for me yet. I'm still got the anxiety. I'm still struggling. If everything's anything's out my routine, I need to keep my routine at the moment. So, I um, but I'm okay. I'm looking forward to Disney World, and yeah, and I cut my, I, like I said, I cut my weekend with my sister short by day, um, and so I feel a lot better about that now. You know, and I'm actually looking forward to it and seeing my nephew, see my sister. It's her birthday, you know, so I've got her a couple of presents. Um, so we're just gonna. Um, yeah, um, spend a nice time. My parents are going to be there as well. So, yeah, so a lot um, going on, I guess. I don't normally have so much stuff to talk about, but yeah, you know me. Um, yeah, so I'll edit this and I'll try and get this out for Friday night. So it's hopefully Friday when you're um, watching this. I am going to... Um, uh, hopefully do an unboxing with Sarah soon for her Anne Stokes um, dragon um, mystery um, painting but Sarah's uh, gotten to the weather again she's got a cold so we might not do that straight away so we'll just have to see but yeah but thank you so much for watching um, if you like this video, please consider giving it the thumbs up. It gets, just enables it to be a bit more high in the search engines and uh, and and on the algorithm. If you like my content in general, please, please um, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get all the notifications. Um, if you want to check out my eBay store, I'll be putting the links uh, down below. Um, and for my latest... For my, my latest updates and info just um oh uh, if you want to take be part of my little community i'm um, on facebook my facebook group is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash jonathan's diamond painting and um i'll put that below as well okay so as always bye for now <laughs>